Hello everyone, welcome back to Art Impressions Watercolor Back to Basics with Kendra Krebs, me. And today we are going to be doing this really fun winter scene um, using one of the older sets actually that doesn't get used enough in my opinion. I absolutely love this. It is the wooden door and it's number 4702. And it comes with all these really cute little elements. So today we're gonna to be using all four of these elements for this little project. And I am also gonna be using this little vine and it's one of these two. Um, it's actually this one right here. Um, from the foliage set four, number 5126. So let's go ahead and get started on this little guy. So I am going to be using, once again, the Canson watercolor paper. It's 140 pound cold press. It's awesome. It's our absolute favorite paper. And I'm gonna take the first little stamp, which is the door. And I'm gonna use uh, first number 969, which is the brown. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there are some little lines up here. They're kind of squiggly. And then um, right over here on either side of the door, these are actually snow. So I'm gonna avoid those with the 969. And then when we go back over it with the 565, as we often do, um, then I will hit that snow with the 565 blue. So I'm gonna come in here and just touch the areas with the 969 that I know are not snow. Okay, so the edges of the door, the frame here, and the little porch area, or the walkway, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so there's that. And then also, now I'm gonna go over it with the 565. So I'll start where the snow is, just so I don't get a bunch of um, brown in here. So I'll go over the snow and right here. And then I'm just gonna go over the whole thing minus the snowy part that I've already touched. You're just sort of avoiding getting a bunch of brown on the snow and that's kind of why I do it in these steps. Okay, so as we normally do, I'm gonna stamp off so I'll just grab a piece of random watercolor paper I have lying around and I'm gonna stamp off one time. You can see how much ink is on there. And then I'm gonna stamp again onto my project paper. So I have something like that. Okay, and before we do any coloring in or anything like that, I wanna get the other, other elements placed in here. So um, we'll start with the little uh, pile of logs. And for all um, three of these little elements, the tree, the wreath, and the logs, I'm gonna use my stamp positioner on this. So I'll go ahead and grab my stamp positioner. And I have my logs here. And I'm just going to nestle these together just like so. Just as the door had the snow on top, so do the logs. So I'm going to go over the logs with my brown. I do wanna leave just a, a little bit of this line off just so I can have the snow sort of come up next to the logs, but that's up to you. You can color the whole thing blue. And then I'm just using the very edge of this pen that I just used. You can either, um, you know, put uh, the, let me see where that is. You can either kind of color off the brown or you can just use the very edge um, of your pen down in here to color the snow. So it's up to you. Okay, I'll stamp this, I'll get it nestled. Stamp that onto my positioner. And then I'm going to decide where I want to place this. I do have a line under there, it's fine. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So I'll put it about here, and then I'll give this a huff. And stamp that down. 
And then we'll do our tree. So I'm just gonna use that same positioner and I'll just turn it to a different corner. See if some of this will come off. Again, my 969 and the 565. So the 969 I'm gonna use on the trunk. And then the 565, I'm just gonna color some of this brown off. 565 I'm gonna use for the rest of the tree. But we are gonna come back in with that little vine to add some greenery into this tree. So don't worry too much about it when you first stamp this down. So I'll take my stamp positioner and stamp that in there. And I think I got it pretty decently stamped. And let's just kind of put it, I don't wanna be off camera here. Let's put it about here. Just about there is a good spot. Give it a little huff. And then you don't have to recolor it if you huff on it just a bit. Okay, so there's that. And then for my little wreath, I'm gonna take this, my little wreath, and I'll use 249 for this wreath. Just ink that up, put it onto our positioner. And I think I want that just about there. I like that spot. Give it a little huff and we'll stamp that right down. Okay, so I have the main elements of my composition here. So now I can get some of these stamps out of the way and begin to color. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is uh, use both number one and number four on this composition, and I will be sure to let you know uh, which brush I'll be using at what time. And then I also have my palette here for adding color. And then I will let you know what pen I'm using by writing the number on my palette. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. I would like to start with the door. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the 969 onto my palette, along with number 249. and 565. That's got a little bit of brown on it. I'm not too concerned about that. Totally fine with it. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is take that 969 and I'm gonna begin to add a little bit of color to this door frame. Now, what you can do as well is go through and pull out some of the shadows if you want to. I want this to be very, very um, soft looking. I don't want it to feel overworked. So I can always add the shadows in a little bit later as well. And let's zoom in just a little bit so that we can get a better view of what I'm doing. I'll take that 969 again and just put some of that color right into the walkway tiles here, or stone, I guess. And then I'll take a little bit more and put it right up into the frame up on top, the eaves. All right, I'm gonna mix a little bit of this 565 with the 969, just like we had done when we first stamped this image down to begin with. And I really like this when adding in some of the shaded areas, just because it gives a little bit different, um, it breaks up the, the brown a little bit more. Just grab a little bit more of that. And 
put some of that in. Okay. Let's add just a little bit of that 969 to the door handle plate. And we can always bring our twin tone in here, um, which I also have handy. So I have the brown and the blue twin tones, which I will be using on this composition as well. So if you wanna grab those, um, if you have them handy, we will be using those as well. Okay, a little bit more of that 969 and the 565 to give us that nice gray. I'm gonna come in and just put a little bit of this on the lamp here. Okay, let's go ahead and begin coloring the, um, the little wreath here. So I'm gonna take my brush and just as we do in a lot of our other foliage, I'm just gonna dab this, leaving some areas open for highlight. So dab, dab, dab. For the door itself, I'm gonna mix number 249 and number 565 together. So I'll grab a little bit of that 565 and a little bit of the 249. And I'll just go back and forth until I feel like I like the color that I have. So that sounds pretty good to me. And I'm just going to come in here and add this color to my door. It's okay if it lightens up as you go. Actually, I think it looks really nice when it does that because it gives you a gradient of color. And then I'll come back in, grab a little bit more. So you don't wanna overwork this color. It is really just a suggestion that the door is something like this color. It, it, it's not gonna be, you don't have to color in every, every little area to know that we have sort of this really beautiful um, greenish blue, you know, cool tone blue uh, door. So I still wanna leave some highlights in there, but I kinda like it like that. I like it broken up in here, so I'm not gonna overwork it. I wanna keep it really nice and soft. On my lamp, I am going to add a little bit of just the 565 into the window area. And I am still using my number four brush. Um, if you don't have the number one brush, you really don't need it. I just really like it when I'm doing the smaller areas, um, just kind of like this little lamp, or um, when I come in and do the line here underneath the snow, I'll use the, the smaller brush. So although I may be using it in, in different areas of this composition, you certainly don't have to have it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to the number one and add a little bit of water to that. I'll take a bit more of that 565 and just put a little bit of that into the lamp. And it just makes it look a little bit deeper and richer in there. A little bit of that 969 with the number one brush. I'm gonna put into the little hinges. and darken up the door plate here. Same color. I'm gonna go up and into the um, eave here, structure. And just very lightly place that color in there. A little bit more of that um, 565 and 969. I really like to mix these together. It's just such a nice gray. And I'll put a little bit of that under here to shade in the door up on top. Okay, 
So now I'm going to take the 565 alone and put in just a little bit of a shadow on the snow, just right on top of the roof. Because even white things have a shadow, right? So we want to add in that little shadow there. And then I'm gonna come in with the, my small brush again and just begin to kind of pull out some of this color on my logs. You can ignore that blue line in there. That's just gonna blend right in when you go to add your color. So I'm gonna grab that 969 And put it right into my logs. I want to blend this out just a little bit so it's not so harsh, but I want it to be a strong color. This is going to be darker in here. and then darker right underneath that snow. And of course the ends will be dark. And we will just take a little bit of water and blend that out as well. A Little bit of that 565 blue. And we're gonna do the same thing we did on top of that house. And we're just going to Put a little bit of a shadow right into that snow. Okay, just like I did up here. All right, we're gonna let those logs kind of dry a little bit before we come back around because we are gonna add, we're gonna use our twin tone to add some of the details back into the logs um, and make them really pop. Okay, a little bit of that blue or the brown on the trunk of that tree. And then I'm going to take my small brush and just begin to pull out some of the shadows um, on this tree as well. Just right at the bottom of these little areas. A little bit of water. Blend that out. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of that 969 and put a little bit of a shadow right at the edge of the snow here, which will kind of make it pop up a bit. And then over the top of that, I'm going to take that 565 and 969 gray and do a very small line. And then I'm just going to take it out a little bit further. Same thing on the other side. We'll do a small shadow here and then take it out just a little bit further there. It can be very, very soft. So a little bit of water here. And just blend that out just a little bit. Not too much. Just soften it up. I'm going to go across the front, bring out some of that color, just soften that edge up. Okay. Now, while these are all drying, let's put a little bit of color back here behind the log and the trees, or the tree. So I'm going to use number N52, which is this really nice sort of blue-gray color. So this is N52, 
And if you don't have N52, no worries. Just take a little bit of your 969 and 565 and make that nice gray again. And then if you wanted to add a bit of a blue in, you could do that with the 528, which is really nice. Um, just be very, use this one sparingly. Just a very small amount to that gray that you normally mix with the 969 and the 565. But if you have N52, great. So I'm just going to take this N52 and just put it right along here. It's very light. It's a very, very light um, gray color. And I just think it goes really nicely with this. And I'm just dabbing it on, ensuring that I'm not going further than the line, the snow line here. And all this is doing is just giving us a background so that our door isn't just sort of, um, you know, floating in the air. a little bit. You can of course take some on the top if you want to. Um, you're probably going to grab a little bit of that snow which is totally fine to do. That color, just don't let the color go inside of the snow. You don't want it to go into this white area because that's what makes the snow really pop. Okay. So now I'm going to take that small brush again and I want to extend using the 565. I want to just extend the snow line just a tiny bit past each of these little elements. Just a tiny bit. A little bit goes a long way here and it just gives you that feeling of um, that there's a little wall here, okay? With that same brush, I'm going to grab more of the 565 and I'm going to put a shadow here onto that little tree. And then right underneath the logs as well. Now we can take our twin tone. So I'm gonna use that brown twin tone and we'll move away our palette just for now. And I'm just going to draw back in these little edges on the logs. And I'm just using a swirling motion here you know, these logs aren't going to be perfect. It's gonna be just fine if it's not. So we'll just put some of these little lines back in. Okay, see how much that brings it back to life when you just add those little lines. We'll do our little handle here and the keyhole. And then on our hinges, we'll darken these up. Just like that. Maybe a little bit here on the edges. The details on the um, little roof there. These little lines. And you can see how much that just pops when you put those details back in. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on our little tree over here. I'm gonna take that little vine that I showed you at the beginning 
And I'm going to use number 177 for this. And I will take just the very tip of this vine. I only want that few top um, leaves right here to be colored. I don't need too much. So just, just those. And then I'm going to just put, and you can use your positioner if you want to on here, but I'm just going to put a few of these little leaves in kind of poking out from the snow. Kind of like that. And you can do this however you want to. I just think it's kind of a fun little thing that you can do. And then at the very bottom, now you don't have to do this. This is just an idea. You can just add in a little bit of green on your brush in there if you want to. Um, if you want to give it, uh, you know, the, the suggestion that there is still some greenery in there, you can do that with just your palette. But I just kind of thought, oh, this might be kind of fun to put some little, um, you know, little bows in there. Okay. Now, I am going to take that 565 again and just add a little bit more of a shadow onto this tree. Because once I put that green in, it really lightened it up. So I just darkened it in a little bit more. And then I will take my number, or my little twin tone, the blue one, and the small tip and I want to just outline the snow with that little blue tip just until I get to the edge of the step or the little porch. I don't want to go too far with this. I want that color to sort of um, just fade out. And if I took this all the way to the end, it wouldn't fade out. It would feel very much unfinished. So I'm just going to bring this in just a little bit at the top here, not too much. Okay. Actually, I'm going to take that brown one one more time and just put it so at the very bottom of that tree. Same thing with the blue. I feel like I kind of lost my little tree shape here at the bottom. Okay, and now it's back. <laughs> All right, and then finally for our little uh, wreath, I'm actually going to be putting in, um, oops, I'm sorry, I wanted the 177. So the 177, I'm going to put in little green berries in here. And if you wanted this to have more of a Christmassy feel, um, you could do red. But I'm just going to do green because now that we're a little bit past Christmas, I just want this to have just a winter feel, not necessarily Christmas, although I guess it could um, feel a little bit Christmassy anyway. Okay. And just a few little dots in here. Cute. Okay, and that pretty is pretty much it. It's a very simple project, um, not using many stamps, but I do want to sign my work. So I'm just gonna take a little black pen. You could certainly use your twin tone if you wanted to, but I'm gonna take this and just sign my work and date it. So if you liked this project, let me know in the comments below. You certainly can um, enter to win this little composition. Um, so put your name in the comments if you would like to get this little one in the mail. And Leah will pick a winner. It could be you. So thank you so much for joining. 
I hope that you all had a wonderful holiday and will be enjoying the new year coming up very soon. So take care, everyone. See you in 2022. Bye.